Hello, everyone. It is Thursday. Welcome to our migraine strategy call. I am Debbie Weidel, your migraine health coach specialist here to help you find ways to find your migraine freedom without having to use all those band-aid cover-ups, the pills, the quick fixes, and all that. I am so excited for today's call. I've been waiting all week. Actually, I've been waiting two weeks for this call. As soon as <laughs> Cheryl told me about it, but I am with Cheryl today. So Cheryl, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. So for those of you who don't know, Cheryl is part of our Freedom from Migraine Method coaching team. So Cheryl, why don't you tell everybody just a little bit about who you are and what you do for us before we get started today? I am a retired educator for life. And um, I joined Migraine Freedom a year ago, right now, May. And I had been suffering from migraines for over 50 years. And I found my migraine freedom in the group. And through that, uh, I enjoyed the mindfulness calls. And sadly to say, the mindfulness coach was leaving, but happy for me to say I had a real big interest in mindfulness. And so I took a couple classes at the university and I'm still working with a professor to bring our mindfulness calls to our clients. So that's what I do currently. I love it. And everyone loves your calls. Oh, <laughs> thank loves you. your calls. So Cheryl gets to work with our private clients once a week in a call, in a coaching call, and then throughout the week to guide and support them because we know how important this piece is for migraine freedom. But anyway, that's not why we're here today. We are here today to talk about Cheryl's amazing visit that she had. So Cheryl went to her neurologist two weeks ago now, is it about yes. two weeks ago, for a follow-up visit. And I'm just going to let Cheryl take over and tell you about this visit because it gave me goosebumps when you told me your story. <laughs> so share with us what happened at your visit. So I travel quite a ways. I go across the country. I live in Idaho. So I go back east to Chicago um, where I've been you going. You do for travel. Over. Holy cow. I do. <laughs> I do. So um, I've been going back there for over 17 years. Um, I was really, really bad when I first landed there and, and found this doctor. And he's been helping me through medications, um, but always been very supportive in things that I wanted to try for myself and try to help myself get better. So I landed there, walked in the office. I haven't been back there for four years because of COVID. So of course, this is the first time we'd seen each other, but we'd seen each other across Zoom every three months. And so I walked in and he came in and he just gave me the biggest hug because I was sitting down He grabbed my hand, pulled me up and he <laughs> gave me this biggest hug. And he goes, it is so exciting to see you. And then he said, he stepped back and he goes, wow, you look healthy. And for me, um, the word healthy was extremely exciting for me because truly I'm looking at my overall health mm -hmm. and in doing overall health, my migraines have become so much less. And so for the past year, every three months, he's seen my progress in the numbers because I always relate the numbers of how many migraines I have per month, which of course a year ago was literally in the 17 to 22 a month. Mm -hmm. And, and then the level of pain, which is averaged around a seven. Mm -hmm. And so he's noticed that those have diminished. And so he said, okay, First thing today, I want to know how many migraines you had this last month. I said two. He said, how many above seven? Zero. And he's like, wow. He goes, <laughs> I just want to know. I know you've explained a little bit, but how did you get here? And I, so I explained some of the program and what we were doing. And, and then I also explained to him that how I started biofeedback with him mm -hmm. 17 years ago and how that actually looped into probably my first touch of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been my biggest help overall, but his excitement, um, he said, I just have to relay to you that the patients that we see here, we as doctors and neurologists can only do so much. We can prescribe meds and we can give suggestions of things for our clients to do at home, our patients to do at home. And he said, but it's up to the patient to then fulfill and find that freedom for themselves or that health for themselves in all those different areas. And he stated with me, these numbers were incredible to me. He said only 14% of their patients and they have patients from all over the world that come to that headache clinic. Mm -hmm. And he said only 14% truly find migraine freedom 
the healthy way without all the meds involved. I still take medications for things that I need, but yep. not for my migraines. And um, he said only 14% of our patients find that migraine freedom health. 86% of them do not because they don't choose to do the work themselves. They rely upon us to answer all their questions, meaning the doctors. Wow. So 86% of people basically have this is a mindset that the only way that they can find relief from pain is through a medication or Botox or some sort of injection or something that the neurologist can give them. And he's a researcher. So these are numbers that he's actually knowing because that's what he does. That's his job. Wow. Why do you think only 14% of people actually <laughs> work at it? He said to me, because it takes a lot of work. And he said to me, he said, you have worked very hard to get to where you're at. I know mm -hmm. that because he said, mm -hmm. I visit with you every three months. He yep. said, I want you to realize that 80%, 86% of the people don't choose to put in that time and energy to find that health of migraine freedom. And I wonder, and I'm sure he doesn't have this data because we'd have to ask these people, but I wonder how many of the 86% just really think there is no hope, which well, is why they go that route, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what he was stating. He said, it's because it's hard when you're in migraines to think, first of all, clearly, mm -hmm. but he said also not just rely upon that doctor for all the answers. You know, he was stating, and what I was hearing was he said, we can only do so much mm -hmm. as neurologists and doctors. We, each of you are so different in your health and your health path Yep, that um, we can only give you what we as doctors can do in that short 15, 20 minute doctor appointment. There's so much work that I'm sorry to say, he said that you have to do on your own, but we're here to support you through all of that. And I just thought, wow, I have this man in my pocket, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that is just encouraging me more and more and more every time I see him. And to really hear those numbers was amazing to me. That is amazing. And the more amazing thing is that you have this neurologist from a pain clinic, you know, a barely renowned pain clinic Yes, that actually understands the whole big picture. Mm -hmm. So he knows that medication, sure, in the short term can totally help us get through our life because let's face it, there's so many of us here in this group that if they didn't have medication, they wouldn't be getting out of bed and they wouldn't I, be functioning. I wouldn't have been able to function without it. One of the things he said that I thought was very interesting is he stated to me he said, we know that every prescription that we prescribe to you to shrink your inflammation, to uh, deal with the pain, um, he said, every single one of those meds cause inflammation in your body, which I know you say all the time. But <laughs> when he states that, he's saying to me, we know when we prescribe that med, it's going to cause inflammation, mm -hmm. even though we know it's it's trying to help your problem. But there again, he said, we can only do so much. Yeah. You yeah. have to work toward finding those things that works for yourself for that health. Man, if we only had more neurologists like that, I mean, this <laughs> is the way the system is supposed to work, right? You go to a neurologist, they give you the medication to help you get through the day, but mm -hmm. then you need to find someone to support you, whether that's a health coach or another doctor or someone support you to be able to get to the root cause of the problem so you can actually get off of that medication. I mean, it's a health team, right? It's a full team. It is because I, I look at all of it. I think your pharmacist has to work with you as mm -hmm. well as I look at, you know, sleep, Dr. Hyman and his sleep yep. class that I took for free, you know, and, and looking at all the food that goes into my body, uh, how I deal with stress. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. why I'm where I'm at in doing what I'm doing in the freedom for migraine program is because mindfulness dealing with my stress. I had no concept of the stress that I was carrying, let alone what those meds were doing to me to bring on and that inflammation. So when I was feeling that pain, I thought it was always something I was doing when yeah. truly I needed to deal with that stress so that I could release that pain. 
Absolutely. Yeah. We know that stress causes just as much inflammation as inflammatory food. I know I sound like a broken record sometimes, but there's always new women coming into this group. So we Mm -hmm. want to make sure that women realize that and doctors know that they know food. Don't get me wrong. Food is 100% important. You know, we can't go eating pizza, drinking beer and having chocolate chip cookies every day for the rest of our lives, though that would kind of be fun, (laughs) except for the beer part. I'd probably squirt the wine, but (laughs) we can't do that. But that being said, we can't just look at food. And I think that's what happens too often Mm -hmm. is that we Mm -hmm. think, Medicine and food are the answer, right? Because typically your neurologist will give you the eat healthy food, don't have MSG, don't drink red wine, you know, the typical stuff. It sounds like Mm -hmm. your neurologist definitely went a step above and beyond, but Mm -hmm. what an amazing visit. I mean, how did you walk away from that visit feeling? Uh, Well, I had a huge grin on my face because when I went out to the front office, the, you know, the reception is sitting there to schedule my next meeting. And of course, a neurologist says not three months, we're going out to six months, which is huge. But anyway, she said, well, I love that smile. Where did that (laughs) come from? She goes, you must have had an awesome visit. So to me, that just said it all. I did. He was so excited. He said, I would love to walk out of every doctor's office room visit with a patient the way that I feel walking out away from you today. He said, it's just such a joy. And again, I've been going there for over 17 years. Well, it's just sadly that part of our medical system is failing us, not Mm -hmm. your particular doctor, but the fact that your poor doctor only has 15 minutes, you know, so much dictated by insurance, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lack of doctors in America. You know, I just saw the numbers the other day. I wish I'd written them down, but the numbers were staggering how short we are on doctors and nurses and healthcare providers. So you really do need this team. You need Mm -hmm. that neurologist. You need your general practitioner. You need a health coach or someone else that's going to help you do all those pieces that the poor doctor can't because they just don't have the time. They don't. They don't. You know, could you imagine like what we do for our clients and Cheryl can attest to this. We give them access to us on a daily basis every single day, including weekends and, you know, the holidays. If you need us, we're there. Can you imagine what that would cost if your particular doctor, Cheryl, you said, I want to have access to you every day for when I have a question. I mean, he wouldn't be able to do it. He can't do it. No, he can't. Uh, He's already only going 15 minutes at a time because he's trying to reach as many people that Mm -hmm. are flying in from all over the world to try to help. And he's not even from the US. He's from Russia and has been practicing here for over 20 years. So he knows the need. Yeah in our medical field for helping people with migraines. You know, this is a horrible medical condition. Yeah. One in four, one in four women. I don't even know the stats worldwide for everyone, but knowing that it's just one in four women, that's huge. Mm -hmm. And I just can't imagine that we're ever going to have enough doctors to be able to cover that. And sadly, migraines are on the rise, not on the decline, even though we have more meds than we ever did to help with migraines. We have more injections. We have more surgeries. They're still on the rise. And it's because we're had, we're looking at the wrong thing, which yeah. your neurologist obviously knows, right? Which is interesting. He has migraines himself and has suffered. When I first went back there, he told me that. And um, that was one of the things he said is the stress among our population mm-hmm is on the rise in their studies, of course, at this research center, they have a university connected to the hospital. So Mm -hmm. it's a team of researchers all the time. And he said, what we're finding in our research is the stress of the people is so much higher in our anxiety, in our population of um, everybody's on the go all the time. And so we have all these stressors coming in on us, as Mm -hmm. well as the stress of what our body's feeling. So truly, that is one of the places we have to connect instead of throwing another pill at it that is only actually going to add to the problem versus take away. It may help the pain go away at that moment, Yep, but it's not helping your overall health. No, and it's going to bring the pain back even worse, sadly, is what ends up happening. But don't get me wrong, ladies, anyone here watching right now who's saying, you know, who is she to say not to take the pill? Trust me, I took the pills 10 years every day. And I had to, I had to, because I didn't know any better, but the great thing is now we know better. Oh, me too. I was on 14 medications when I joined a year ago, 14. 
I didn't realize you, I had seven. I thought I was bad. Sure. You doubled me. <laughs> yeah. Because it was, it was constant. It was constant, you know? Man. I, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough for sharing your visit. Is there anything else you want to share with everyone today since you're in the hot seat? I mean, what an amazing visit, everyone. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions for Cheryl, by the way, please pop them in chat right now or questions for me. We've got Brenda in there watching. Valentina's over there. Nicole is, I can't see everybody else, but I know there's a bunch of people over there watching. So thank you everyone for being here. If you have questions, pop them in, but anything else you want to share with everyone today, Cheryl? No, I'm just excited to be a part of this. I had no idea this even existed. So just for me, it was life-changing to become a part of the Women's Migraine Freedom Group, as well as the Freedom from Migraine Group. I I just wouldn't be where I'm at to be as healthy as I am with my family and my husband and my children and beautiful, wonderful grandchildren. So I know, thank I love you. Seeing those grandkids. I do. I do. <laughs> well, we are blessed to have you. We are so fortunate to have you as part of our team. And thank you for taking some time away from you today, because I know you're not home and you're enjoying yourself <laughs> somewhere. But Cheryl was so excited to share this, that she's taken a little time away from her time with her girlfriend to share her amazing story, because I think it's really important to know the conventional and functional medicine can totally work together. They totally can, but you can't just assume only one thing is going to be your answer. You have to find that pattern that's going to work for you, where yes, you take some meds in the short term to help you get through your day because nobody wants to be in pain, right? But we need to know what the consequences of those are so that we quickly work on the root cause so that we can slowly get off those meds, which is what Cheryl's doing and what Cheryl's doctor is recommending that everyone does. And hopefully we can help be a part of that. All the health coaches and you know everyone that works for me through the Women's Migraine Freedom Group can be a part of helping each and every one of you do that plan as well. Amazing. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you so much. You enjoy the rest of your time away. Everyone else, I hope you have an amazing migraine-free day and we will see you. Let me check my calendar really quick. We're going to see you next week on a special day and time. So we have Marsha who is going to join us next week to share her migraine freedom story. She is going to come to us on Tuesday, which is May 23rd at 6 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you change your calendars. We're not meeting on Thursday. We're going to meet on Tuesday. And I am so excited for everyone to hear her story. So if you need anything, everyone, let us know. Here's to your migraine free day and we'll see you in the group. Take care, Bye. everybody.